Hello and welcome to Clock Tower Game Studios. Today we're going to be talking about Anvil Industries' Daughters of the Burning Rose and building and magnetizing them. As you can see, the model I've got here is already magnetized. You can swap the arms on and off. And I'm going to be showing you how to go through and do that entire process from start to finish. First, we're going to talk about the tools needed. Then we're going to get into the steps in a little bit more detail. And we're going to talk a little bit more about Seer as we go. So first of all, you're going to need your flush cutters. These are used for removing models from the sprue. And you're going to need your hobby knife. I have the trusty X-Acto, but any knife with a nice sharp edge and a fine point will do. You'll use this for a few things. In some places, you may need to use it to seat the magnets a little better. In others, you'll be using it to put a little bit of a pilot hole into the model. And on that point, you'll also need a round, fine-tipped file. This is used to expand the hole we drill here in a little bit if needed. Sometimes you'll need it, sometimes you won't. And next, of course, you'll need magnets. Make sure you get rare earth magnets, or neodymium, I believe is how it's pronounced. But anyway, they're a nice stronghold, and I have these left over from a couple older projects and a few different sizes. So these, the bigger they are, the more weight they can take. But generally speaking, as you can see, they have a nice solid hold. And these are one of the smaller sizes. I believe they're eighth of an inch or like three millimeters by one millimeter. So they're a nice tiny little magnet. Now they come, like I said, in all kinds of different sizes. Now, of course, you'll need to drill to make your holes and make sure that you have a drill bit that is slightly larger than the hole you'll need for the magnet. That way you've got a little clearance and the magnet should slide right in. Now I use a power drill. You don't have to, you can use a pin vise, hand drill, whatever you've got. I just find that the portable electric cordless drill, nice small, it's actually an electric screwdriver, I believe. But anyway, gets the job done, is nice and easy to use, speeds things up. Of course, need super glue. Got to have super glue, holds the whole thing together. Um, you'll need super glue instead of plastic glue because plastic glue won't bond with your magnets. Now let's just get straight into cutting up the pieces. We have some legs on the sprue still. Use your flush cutters. Note that they have the flush side, the nice flat side. And for resin models, you get in there as close to the model as you can. And then use nice, slow, steady, even pressure and slowly clip them off. Now you wanna do it this way because if it's a plastic model, you wanna leave a little clearance because if you use other kinds of clippers or you cut flush against plastic models, sometimes it can leave a divot or a little hole in the model and you don't want that you want to cut that off as as nice and flush as you can to leave as little bit of a mark as you can now like all models these have a little bit of flash so we're going to just trim that off nice and easy and you just take your hobby knife or your exacto and here i'm just shaving off the uh, gates from the sprue and be very careful with your blades use a nice sharp blade use controlled pressure don't hack at it you'll end up cutting yourself and then when it comes to trimming off the flash just use the back edge of the blade slowly slide it along be nice and careful and you'll note here i'm actually rotating the model slightly that way i don't end up flat spotting any one portion of the model and leaving a mark that you'll see when you're dry brushing later yeah see there you want to nice smooth round finish you don't want to leave a flat spot anywhere there shouldn't be and here i just go through do that across the whole model i'm checking it out sorry it's out of frame there a little bit just trying to see what i'm doing so there i found another little bit of a piece of flash and i'm just kind of scraping that off nice and gently now these resin models don't take quite as much abuse as the hard plastic stuff so you got to be a little more careful with them and here i've already done this process on a couple other Bits, so I'm going to go through and use these to kind of dry fit and show you what I'm doing. So the torsos here, they have that stem on the base underneath the waist. And that is really handy because it fits nicely into the socket on the tops of the legs. And that is great for a couple reasons. One, it's going to leave you an extra surface so you've got more of a bond with your glue. And it's going to let you kind of rotate and pivot around that waist joint so you can get a good fit and kind of figure out what you're doing. So now here, I'm just dry fitting, kind of seeing what the pose will look like, getting an idea what I want, and just kind of toying with it a little bit so I can visualize what I'm doing. Next up, we've got one of the arms, and here I'm gonna demonstrate how I do the arms, because these arms have a peg on them that fits into a hole in the shoulder joint. So here we're gonna do the same thing, use the flush cutters, cut them off the sprue, 
as close to that little uh, nub as possible. And this is for use mostly without the magnet. So you've got that little nub, you've got the hole in the shoulder, nice socket, fit nice and tightly. It's a good solid fit and again leaves you more surface to put your glue in. And now if you're not using the magnets, you want to be really careful and dry fit your models. And these Anvil Industries models are fantastic because the way the sockets fit together, you can really twist them, get a lot of different poses, and the guns really help with that too. Now, of course, we are using the magnets, so the next thing we need to do is remove the shoulder joint. So we get in there, and here you can see I end up struggling a little with my knife because it's dull, and I kind of fiddle with it, and I keep starting to worry about cutting myself. So finally, I just throw in the towel. It's not worth cutting myself over. I have flush cutters for that and with the resin it's easy to just get in there cut it off nice and tight and then just trim off whatever excess is there with the hobby knife so it's a nice smooth end product and i can't stress this enough be careful with your knives like i said minor doll and i'm having to be extra cautious with it a sharper knife would have cut through that a lot easier would have made it a lot less dangerous and now i'm just giving it a good once over checking it out i'm uh, kind of giving it an eyeball to see exactly how the magnet should fit in there now that I'm confident of the fit, I'm going to check the polarization of the magnets I've used on the previous model. If you don't have a previous model, that's fine. You can make this up as you go. My thing is, is I don't like it when the magnets can go either way. I want my left arms on the left and my right arms on the right, and I don't like them to work on the other. So by checking my polarization, I can make sure that they go the right direction. Okay, so it goes without saying, use your power tools with care. No matter what kind of drill you're using, you should be careful with it. Now, I've got mine turned all the way down to the lowest torque. And then I just line it up with my model. And here I'm doing the torso. I'm going to expand the hole in it a little bit because the magnets don't quite fit in there nice and snug on the first go round. They need to be drilled out just a little bit so you get the extra depth and the a little bit of extra diameter on the hole itself. Now I just go nice and slow, take it easy. I know this looks a lot faster than it actually is, but you just drill in there nice and slow. Now this resin is pretty soft, so you wanna be careful with it. Don't get carried away, don't be in a hurry. Just take your time and be careful with it. Now here I'm cleaning up the mess a little bit, because of course that leaves residue. I just held it off the screen and blew it out a little. Now here I'm just kind of comparing, getting a note for it. Now that we've got the torso ready, we're gonna move on and get the arm ready. So here we take it and we're going to use the hobby knife and we're going to drill a little bit of a pilot hole with just the very tip of the knife and now i've kind of marked out and figured out where exactly i want my magnet to sit so it lines up nice with the shoulder and here you just take the back of your knife take the point sink it in there just like so and then just work it around and make just a little bit of a divot for the tip of the drill to sit in that'll give it a nice point to center on and get started with the drill and next we're going to carefully drill out the shoulder of the arm. Remember to be careful with your power tools and especially be careful with this part because the shoulder is really thin and it's easy to go all the way through. I've done it before more than once, but with these models, you just need a little bit of depth. So just slowly start to creep in, make sure you've got the backside of the shoulder supported and be very, very careful with this. Get adult supervision if you're a kid or have your parents do it. If you have a soft vise, you could always put it in a vise and use a drill press, which would probably be a little safer, but you use what you got, right? And now after giving it a once over, I'm not quite confident that that's gonna be deep enough or a wide enough hole. So I just kind of get it in there at an angle and wallow it out. Now here you'll notice I'm got it at a pretty steep angle from the top. That's because when I was initially drilling, the bit slipped. So you go in from the opposite angle. So say I'm, in this case, I want to move the magnet up the arm. I start by drilling a hole a little bit farther, drilling the hole a little bit farther towards that top shoulder like this. Just kind of wallow it out towards the top side there above the shoulder. And then once I'm confident that I've got that started, I back the bit out blow everything out get the debris out of there and then I'll take and I'll use the hobby knife and cut around get the rest of the debris out just be careful with your knives again can't stress that enough 
And even after all that, I'm still just not quite happy with how it looks and how the magnet's gonna fit in there. So I just keep working at it and sometimes it takes three or four tries and it takes practice to be able to judge it. And here I'm just going back in with the drill, wallowing the hole out just a little bit more, expanding on it, making sure that magnet's gonna fit in there and line up just how I want. You'll see that I'm just real slowly working the blade in. I'm trying to take my time, be really careful. Don't drill your fingers, don't try and drill through the shoulder of the arm. Just keep it nice and simple, nice and clean. And there you can see the finished product. It's pretty deep. It's in there probably four, four or so millimeters. There's definitely extra space, which is fine. You would definitely rather have too much space than not enough. And having the extra depth, the way we're gonna connect the magnet is gonna prevent from having it go in too far anyway. So here I'm just getting the appropriate size magnet out. And I, you can see I've also pulled out the original model that I already had magnetized. And again, this is for polarization. So there I just take my one magnet, drop it on there. Automatically, I know that as soon as I glue this in, it's gonna line right up. There's not gonna be any need to worry about the directions the magnet's pointed. So there I'm just test fitting, making sure that it fits all the way into the shoulder we've drilled out. And there, as I'm fitting it, you can see that there's a little bit of a gap. So it's not quite deep enough. So get the drill back out, drill back in there just a little more. Here, we're just gonna work it in a little bit deeper. And we're gonna do this as many times as it takes to get it right. We want that fitting to be nice and flush. We don't want a whole lot of excess of the magnet poking out of the shoulder joint. We want it to sit just as nice and as close to the torso as we can to hide that gap. All right, and now that we've got that test fit solid, we're ready to move on to gluing it in place. Now remember, I've used the original model that I had magnetized here as a guide. If you haven't done that yet, if this is your very first model you're magnetizing, it doesn't really matter which way that they go left versus right. As long as both the shoulder on the torso and the shoulder in the arm match up, that's good enough. Now here you'll see I'm taking a very small amount of super glue. I'm putting it on a piece of cardboard so it's out of the way. And here you can see I'm gonna apply it with a toothpick. Now, this is to prevent any over gluing to where it doesn't spread out and make a mess. It's gonna keep it nice and tidy. Cause again, you don't want anything to get in between that shoulder joint and cause a gap. You want that to be as snug as possible. Especially on two handed weapons like this, it'll make a big difference. And the more closely fit it is, the better it is for getting both the shoulders in place at the same time. And there we have it. We've got the uh, right arm, the one holding the rifle butt in place. I peeled it off to make sure it doesn't end up glued to the shoulder. You wanna make sure you separate the two of them. Otherwise the glue will stick to the shoulder and you'll end up sticking the whole thing together and that kind of defeats the point of putting the magnet in there all together. Okay, now that we've got the right arm done, we're gonna work on getting the torso magnetized. So I'm going to set this aside here for a minute let it finish setting, the glue getting all dried. Now I'm gonna take the right arm and do the same thing, but backwards. We're gonna put the magnet on the arm. As soon as I can dig that out here. And once we've got the magnet out, just drop it in place the same way. And now, like I said earlier, I know that that right arm matches the one we just did. So that means that it's gonna match the torso the same way the other one did as well. Make sure there's no debris in there. Same thing, just a little dab of glue. And just gently and carefully get that in there. Work it around so there's glue all over, but just a thin layer, you don't want a huge mess. And then the same thing, you push the uh, magnet into spot, make sure it's a good fitting and kind of rake it off. Now there's a little bit of an overhang there, so I just kind of push it back into place with my thumbnail. Get it all seated in there nice and tight. All right, now that we've got the right arm and the right torso all done up, and I'm satisfied with how they fit together, I'm going to cut the video off and go ahead and do the other sides. Okay, now we've got both the left and the right side of the torso done. We've got both the right and the left arms done. So the next thing we need to do is get that gun fixed in place in between the two. So you'll see here, I've picked out a plasma type gun. I've already got a crossbow style firearm for this model or for these models done up. So I wanted to do one of the special weapons that I've got. I did try to find a better way to magnetize these where you could just swap out the weapons instead of the arms as well. The connection point between the weapon and the butt of the rifle is just too thin. But here you can see I've got the 
right and left arm on there, the right arm holding the rifle butt and the left arm kind of supporting it across their chest. And there we're just going to give it a test fit and make sure everything fits up nice. Now with those slot and tab fittings for the weapons, this is nice and easy. And I'm going to do the same thing here in just a second to glue that together. Get my card stock or my cardboard back out to put the glue on. All right, and as I'm getting that out, I noticed that my uh, glue's dried up, so I'm getting out another little puddle, so I have more to work with. Just a very little. You don't need much, and it's a good way to save super glue doing it this way. Yeah. Okay, now I'm just laying everything out so it's nice and organized and ready to get going. I've got my arm, I've got the torso that's set aside, and I've got the weapon. You'll note that I've got the left arm, the one with the open hand, already on the pre-magnetized model, so it's nice and easy to fit. And here we get started actually gluing things together. I get just a little bit of glue, make sure I get the big flat area on the inside of the slot there, and then I'm going to make sure I get all three of the edges as well to give it the most surface area for the glue to bond to as possible. Now doing this is going to be the best way to make sure that that bond is nice and sturdy and that your model doesn't fall apart while you're taking the matched arms on and off. So there, now that I've got that done, I let it sit for just a second, just long enough to make sure it's cured just a little. The super glue doesn't take very long. And then I start putting it together and making sure that the arms line up. And the hand has a little bit of a gap, but that's fine. Glue will fill in part of that, and it's in an area you're not really going to see it. So I'm not too terribly worried about it. Here I continue to try and get that fit nice and even, lifting the arms up and down, making sure things are evenly spaced everything's as good as it's gonna be and sorry for getting the model off camera there for a second i'm still getting used to working while recording so anyway here you can see that the hand lines up pretty well pretty satisfied with that now i'm getting it ready to go ahead and apply some more glue just scoop up a little bit and then i'm just gonna get that hand out of the way so i can get to all of it and just slather that all over the inside of that palm so again I want the thumb, the palm, and the fingers. Give it as many surfaces to bind to as I can. And here, I just lift the hand into place. Give it a squeeze off camera, which you can't really see, sadly. But there, I'm just making sure that it's all fit together and that that is going to be a nice, strong bond. Now, while that's curing, I'm going to go ahead and glue the legs to the base. And you'll note that I use a Loctite Super Control Gel, or Ultra Control Gel. I use that because it helps hold small fiddly bits into place while they're drying without having to worry about holding the whole thing by hand from start to finish, because that can be tedious. So here I just put down a pretty liberal layer of glue down because this is going to be hidden, so you want this bond to be as strong as possible. And I'm just going to press that into place flat on the base and I'm holding it on the tabletop so you can make sure that it's a nice flat surface and the legs are very perpendicular. It's hard to see from the camera, but it's the easiest way to do it for me. So now that we've got that done, I'm going to set it aside to cure. While it's curing, we're going to move on and get to work on getting the head glued onto the torso. Next, I'm going to note the position of the legs. They're a little leaned forward, so I want to make sure that the torso and the head posing matches that. I'm just double checking to make sure how everything's going to fit together. And here you can see that, yeah, the legs are angled forward in a running position, so the torso is going to lean forward. So I want to kind of put her head back just a little bit to compensate for that. Keep her eyes on the horizon. So there, I've done a little bit of a test fit. I know what I'm going to do. And same thing, I'm just going to put in a little bit of glue into the socket. Make sure it gets all the way around there. And there, I'm going to use the dry end of the toothpick to make sure it gets everywhere. And then just drop the head in there like so. Make sure it's how you want it. Hold it for a second until the glue dries. All right, now that I've given the glue a little bit of a chance to cure the rest of the way, I get the head and the legs and the base out and test everything, make sure they're nice and solid. Again, just leave a little bit of a puddle of glue on my cardboard. Get up the toothpick, and this time we're going to do the same thing. The receiving end, the slot, we're going to just get the glue in there. Make sure we get both in the socket and around to the outside of it, because just like the gun and just like the hand, we want to make sure we give the glue as much material to hold on to as we can. There we just use the end of the toothpick, the other end of the toothpick, to clean up as much of the excess glue as we can. And here we just slot the torso into the waist, hold it to give it a second, 
and there we go. Now that's going to need a second to cure. I like it though, it's nice and perpendicular, she's all in line, she looks good. Nice solid model. And that's pretty much a finished model. We've got the arms magnetized, we've got the torso ready to go. I just need some added details, which I'm going to do off camera. So start to finish, this whole process took maybe, I don't know, I'd say probably about 45 minutes to do the whole thing. Now, that's with filming, that's with recording audio and everything. This really doesn't take that long to do. In order to get this model right and do a bunch of them cranked out where you basically go through, drill them all out, magnetize the whole thing, a whole squad takes a couple hours. It's really not that bad. And I think you'll find that the rewards are well worth the effort put in. Now let's take a look at some other things you can do with magnets. One thing that I like to do since I play multiple games, sometimes they require different bases for things like bikers, is to put the, bike, the bases on magnets, that way you can swap between them for various games. Which is of course another way you can add versatility to your models. Now next of course you've got some of the standard swaps. This one's a backpack for a Space Marine from Games Workshop. And I like being able to swap backpacks for character models, which is what this model's supposed to be, because sometimes I want just my normal captain, sometimes I want my captain with a jump pack, sometimes I want my captain to carry special weapons, sometimes he just gets a bolter. In this case, you can see me swapping between some melee options and a melt -a gun One thing you want to be sure of is if the model has shoulder pads, then you want to make sure that they're not in the way of two-handed weapon swaps. And next you can see that I've got a larger model that I've used slightly bigger magnets for. This is Anvil Industries Daughters of the Burning Rose Warwalker. Now they haven't released them yet, but this model is supposed to be getting uh, different weapons options for the arms. So I've gone ahead and pre-made mine with magnets. That way when they do put those out, I'll be able to swap them right in and use whatever I want on there. So now that we've got the model put together, I want to take a few minutes to talk about the game Seer. SEER stands for Skirmish Encounter Elementary Rules, which is meant to be a generic system used with any models you want from any company you want, any genre you want, and to be able to play those against your friends' model. This is advantageous for a couple reasons. If you've been in the miniature gaming hobby for a while, you'll know that everybody has their own pet miniature game that no one else plays. One of the other big advantages of this system is that you can play with miniatures as cheap or as expensive as you want. My current plan is to make a full video introducing Seer in a lot more depth at another time. The next step will be including rules for how to build a faction and roster. And that's all done using a point by system to help ensure balance between different genres and factions. Here you can see some of the models previously used for testing. As you can see, there's a wide variety of different factions that are possible, including steampunk, fantasy, high sci-fi, and anything and everything in between. I'm really looking forward to making more videos about that in further depth. It's going to be a lot of fun and I'm looking forward to getting the word out. And that means it's time to wrap up for the video. So of course, all the usuals, if you liked the video and you want to see more of our content, subscribe, hit the bell notification, and be sure to check out our other social media for more regular updates, including Instagram where I post daily updates of what I'm up to, and Facebook where we make all of our bigger announcements. And remember, be sure to check out Anvil Industries website and store if you're interested in these products. They are a fantastic company and their models are amazing. Definitely go and check them out. Now I'd like to take a second to thank everybody that's shown their support so far. I've already had a ton of views on the first video and had some friends and family and some other people randomly interested actually subscribe and like the channel which is fantastic. I can't tell you guys how excited I am about that and I'm really looking forward to seeing where this can take us. So remember, at the clock tower, it's always game time.